virtual Sunday. Yeah. All right, to all our friends who are out there in cyberspace, we'll give you a moment to join us. How has your week been? Challenging, good, right? The key to remember, the light is in the business. As we'll get to today, today I was so inspired during the week about this because I found so many students who've been around for so many years have misconceptions. And part of it is the teacher's fault. I mean, uh, you know, because the way we express things and we don't think about how people are receiving it. So we say it because, of course, in our mind, we know the whole system. We know, we know what we're saying. But that doesn't mean that everybody who's hearing knows what we're saying, you know. So, okay. Okay. So let's start. As I was sharing here a little bit before we got started, you know, I asked Karen for a message to help relate with today. So I open it up and I'm thinking, no, 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 this is not the right message because it's, you know, got a few things in it maybe everybody won't get. But it's the right message because the essence of what she's saying is what we want to talk about today. So let me just kind of give you a few of the verses here so we can uh, get some support from Karen. So she's talking about, she says here, there's a Kabbalistic precept that is performed on Friday night to usher in the Sabbath, the Shabbat. A woman or women of the house light candles, and then they make a prayer of blessing on them. Okay, so if you're familiar, you're familiar. Meanwhile, this is the key. This is a deeply meaningful act. Kabbalistically, we learn the female is the vessel. That's the thing to keep in mind for today. The vessel that draws light into the home. Right? It's the vessel draws light into the home. And it is the female who manifests, or the vessel, that manifests all the energy and puts it in its place, helping others to grow. Okay, that's what I want you to understand. We're going to talk about how this relates to us and how people have been confused. And she says one other thing. Without the vessel... Light cannot be revealed in this world. That's really essential. The sun needs the earth to reflect it in order to reveal its radiance. It cannot illuminate in a void. I remember when I first came to the center, the Rav used to say, why is space dark? Right? You see these space things, it's dark out there. Where's the sun? The sun is shining, right, into the, into the atmosphere. Why is it dark then? Should be light, shouldn't it? No, that's what Karen is reminding us. That's what the Rav used to teach us from the Kabbalist. The vessel, when you see dust, or there's, you know, material, whatever, meteors or whatever they are in the, in the sky, then the light of the sun gets reflected and manifested, as Karen's saying. It takes a vessel to manifest, right? If you have a big pot of coffee, you have guests over, you made a big pot of coffee, it's your best coffee ever. If they don't have a cup, how much coffee can you serve them? None. But you have all this coffee that you want to serve them. You have the desire to serve, but if there's no container, and this is what we're going to get in today. So before we get started, now we have a few people here. One is I want to thank you for being here physically, for those of you who are joining us regularly, and your continued support because it allows us not only to maintain what we're doing, but also to grow and expand, which is I hope we'll see a little more uh, specifically today, is the key to bringing the end of all chaos for everyone. We're not interested in just bringing peace for some people. We're not interested in bringing peace to part of the world or temporarily. The mission of the Kabbalah Center, literally, spiritually, since the time of Adam and Eve, we dropped into this world, but specifically since the time of Rabbi Shimon, who put the Zohar in writing, is one thing. Bring peace and harmony forever to the world, or as we've called it, heaven on earth. That's it. So you can't do it without people. And this is why we're constantly working to grow our consciousness and give us new awareness so that we can focus our effort, we can focus our behavior, and achieve that goal, because it can't be done by one person. Rabbi Shimon, 2,000 years ago, had absolute peace in his life. Why did he bother to do what he did? Because he can't have absolute, complete peace. He can have his peace, but he can't get back to the endless without the rest of us. And every gate Kabbalist along the way, without everybody, you, should I say nothing? I don't want to say nothing, 
but without everybody joining in, there is no final redemption. Each of us can feel peace. I'm sure some of you, how many of you have a certain sense of appreciation for the protection you have relative to all the garbage going on out there? Yes, you have, okay, but there's still garbage out there. So we can have a little sense of peace. Thank God, like I had somebody a few months ago was telling me, just crying, crying, why? Because in the few months before that, she had like five or six people close to her, around her dying. So I just reminded her one thing, not that she shouldn't have grief for them, but thank God it's around her, not her, not her. So we have to have the same thing, yes, gratitude, appreciation for where we are, our sense of protection, our greater sense of peace and harmony and all the good blessings in our life. At the same time, be sensitive and caring about what's going on around us because we can't finish the job without everybody joining, right? So let's go on with that. Oh, just uh, somebody mentioned to me, those of you who are watching, if you're enjoying what you're getting from this, please like the page. Somehow that helps us reach more people, right? This Spiritual Sunday page. So like it, subscribe if you watch the YouTube uh, Spiritual Sunday, subscribe to that. All these things help us reach more people. So if you've been changed, if you've benefited, let's make sure we're benefiting other people along the way. Okay, so <clears throat> how many people know God? Hmm, good question, no? Oh, throw you right off, okay. So let's say... We know, we learn here, God is an unstoppable force. Unstoppable. There's no way to stop the light of God. It's just shining on us. In fact, you and I have come to learn that's why there's so much pressure in this world. Because the light of God is constantly shining. And until, as we'll talk about today, or as Karen said, until we open our vessels, that light of God is just going to create pressure. But it's good pressure. And that's what we want to start seeing. So the light of God is unstoppable, and yet people will say, yeah, but look at all the chaos in the world, Chaim. So if God is unstoppable, right, and this is what I want to wake up, because we know we have that opponent in our head, that parasite we are try we're working to get rid of, to tell, yeah, but if God is infinite and all-powerful and all-loving, why is there so much chaos and death and destruction? We're going to get to that. But I want you at least to start thinking, it's the illusion of our five senses, right? How does a magician make their living? If you think about it, it boils down to fooling our five senses. Yes or yes? Yes. yes. Okay. Right? Yes. Fooling our five senses. Illusionists. How do they make a living? By fooling our five senses. So then when people say, yes, we know God is all loving and kind in this sense, but why? That's the illusion of our five senses also. That's the power of that opponent, that parasite. The Rav used to call him the master magician because he's throwing all this illusion at us. Now, more to our particular point. If God is unstoppable and created us, then who are we? We also have an unstoppable power. It is completely unstoppable. Oh, but, as we'll talk about today, looks can be deceiving because... All of us, even those of us who have said, yeah, I, I feel grateful for all the good things in my life. I appreciate this protective shield that I'm in relative to the vast majority of the world. At the same time, I'm not yet 100%. So if I have an unstoppable power and I really want to be you know, good and kind and all of this, why don't we have it all? The good question? Is it a good question? All of you out there around the world, good question? Somebody put yes or no. Quick, quick, time is running. Okay, so let's see. So what is that unstoppable power? Hmm, not yet. Anyone? What did God create us? Most of you have taken Kabbalah 1. We learn here from Kabbalah 1 forward in the endless world, the creator, ah, someone said yes, okay. The creator created us to receive its light, its beneficence. That's all the creator wanted, to just give all of its goodness, infinite bliss to us. So created us to receive that infinite bliss, the light force of God. So we understand our soul, 
There was only one. In the endless world, you can't have two infinite things, can you? So there's only one vessel. It's an infinite soul. One soul, we call it here. What is that? the energy of that vessel? Desire to receive the light of the Creator. The endless, there was no desire to receive money, car, love, houses, business, awards, rewards, etc. It was only light, because the light is, and is only, and ever was, the only source of lasting fulfillment. So every human being, we are desire. That's it. That's who we are. Our inherent nature is desire to receive. We learn light, but in this world, unfortunately, we can have different desires, can we not? How do you know that desire is the essence of a human being and not really sharing is the essence? The essence. It's not, doesn't mean, as we'll say, it is our purpose here, but our essence is desire to receive. How do we know? How many of you ever seen a baby? When a human being is born, how many babies, even one-year-old, two-year-old, say, Mom, Dad, I'm here just to share with you. Let me find a way to share. No, the babies are, give me, take care of me, feed me, change me, this and this. They become toddlers. How do they act? Give me, give me, give me. Teenagers, give me, give me, give me. 20s, 30s, I just got to make sure we don't reach us, right? So let's say maybe 30s or so, are we still okay? I won't say anything after that. But into our 30s, it's still, give me, give me, give me, give me. Got to get, give me a good job. Give me love. Give me kindness. Give me this. Give me money. Give me vacation. Give me entertainment. Give me peace of mind. Yes or yes. So we know the inherent nature, as we've just understood, is vessel. Give me desire. Our desire, according to the Kabbalists, unstoppable force. Unstoppable force. Because as Karen reminded us, the vessel automatically manifests and reveals the light. The vessel manifests and reveals the light. For me, the easiest metaphor, if you go into, if you jump in a swimming pool, is the swimming pool full of water? Yes or yes? Yes. Simple term, hopefully, <laughs> especially if you jump. <laughs> okay. So you take, you take a red glass, right? A red glass cup, and you put it inside the water of the swimming pool. So that infinite water, that large amount of water, what does it now look like? One, it's manifest in your red glass, and what does it look like? Red. So you have clear water, except where that vessel is, now it looks red. So you take your other vessel, and it's red, but now let's say the first one was hexagon shape, so it was red hexagon water, now you take red cup, now it's a round cup. So now what does the swimming pool water look like? Red and round. You take a blue cup, square, and you put it in the water. Right? The water just is the water. The light is the light. The vessel determines the manifestation of it. So whatever vessel we present to the universe, the vessel always, always manifests light. You and I fortunately have come to understand in every moment of chaos, in every place there's chaos, confusion, discord, or whatever, the light didn't disappear. Because if the light is infinite, where's it going to disappear to? Where can the light run away to if it's infinite? <clears throat> but it can't run away, so then what creates darkness, chaos, and confusion? That's what I want us to understand. Because if, as the Kabbalists say, our desire is unstoppable, nothing stops desire, how many of you would like to have completely blissed out life? You're really going to be obstinate this morning, aren't you? Okay, good. <laughs> right? We all want it, so how come we don't have it if nothing stops desire? So that's what I want us to understand. Vessel. Right? Everyone getting it? We are inherently desire. It's the only power we have. Only power we have is desire. So we often say here, consciousness is everything. That's what the Kabbalists teach us, yes? But I want us to maybe understand consciousness a little deeper today. What is consciousness? If the Creator created us as a vessel, filled us with light. So what's our true inherent consciousness? 100% light. Right? how to share 24-7, because that's the nature of the light. So we already have 100% light. We're not missing the light. 
are we? So then when we say this person has a higher or a lower consciousness, what does it really mean? Think simple. You have a cup, our vessel, our desire is already 100% full, right? The cup is full. Now, what does it mean, higher or lower consciousness? How much of that light is revealed as kindness, love, compassion, generosity, sharing, caring, forgiveness? And how much is concealed under the shell or the curtain of anger, jealousy, greed, ego, fear, insecurity, guilt, and shame? That's what makes a consciousness. So if a person is 10% of their potential, kind and compassionate, etc., they have a revealed consciousness of 10. What's missing? They still have 100%, but 90% is hidden. How many of you had children ever? So when your child is born, do they come out with, I don't know, playing the piano, or they're out there playing sports, etc., etc.? No, but we know inside them they have the potential. But as a baby, let's call it, they're only 25%, right? Because they can walk and do and things like that, but they haven't revealed their potential. But we always say it's God-given. It's already inside of them. Yes or yes? Okay, so what's our job? To give them ways and means, encouragement, training, how to bring out that talent. So you say they started with 25% as they learn in school, as they go, I don't know, to coaches and sporting things, etc. They're bringing out 35, 45, 55, 65. So they're raising the manifestation of their talent and ability. They're not changing their talent and ability because it's already there. We can't change the light. The Creator can't change the light. We're full of the light. The difference is we raise our consciousness by revealing more and more of the light that's inside of us. By what? Greater actions of love, kindness, compassion, generosity, tolerance, humility, etc. That's why we call it transformational sharing. If it's not transformational, it stays the same. So the 10% stays the 10%. 50% stays 50%. 75% stays 75%. Unless it's transformational, which means what? I share uncomfortably. I didn't want to forgive that particular person what they did. I'll forgive 75% of the people in my life, but not that person. So when we pause and we say, no, but I want more light revealed in my life because I want more of the blessing, I have to send the energy of forgiveness to that person. Now I just raised to 80%. So now I'm blessed 80%. What does the opponent tell us? No, but why do you want to forgive that person? They were so nasty. They didn't even ask you for forgiveness. They didn't even say they're sorry. Who cares? We said last week, what do I get for forgiving that person? Some of you who didn't watch last week, go back and watch it. You remember? When you walk into a store, how many questionnaires do they give you to see if you're a decent person? None. They just want you to buy their product. So I want the light that's in the soul of that nasty person. I don't want to connect to their nastiness. So if I, I'm forgiving, I'm connecting to their nastiness. When I send the light and I forgive them, which is transformational because I didn't want to forgive them, I grew, I get more benefit. What's our nature? Desire. Desire to receive fulfillment from the light. So then our desire the same way. We have to realize, why do we have chaos? Because we haven't yet been using all of our desire for sharing. We have only one choice in life, two options. We can use our desire in order to share, expressing the light inside of us, or we can have desire to receive oneself alone. I want the car, the house, the money, the job. I want people to love me, care for me, you know, do all these wonderful things for me. That's it. That's the only choice we've got. The opponent in this world, what is it? Give me, give me, give me. And think about it. What do you train your kids? Got it. Go to school, get a good education so you can get a good job. So you can get a nice family. So you can get a great vacation. So you can get all those things. No, this world, yes, the physical world based on gimme, 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 because why? That's our inherent nature. Desire to receive. But in the endless world, what was the desire to receive? What was the object of our desire? The light. The light, the light is the only source of lasting fulfillment. I'm just a cup. We're just a cup. You and I don't want to just be cups. We want to be a pipeline. We want to be a channel, a conduit from the upper world through us into this world. Anyone here ever watered your lawn 
or seen the gardener water the lawn? Right? So the spigot supplies all the water you could ever need. What's the point of the hose? Is the hose creating the water? No, the hose is just channeling, meaning carrying it from the spigot 20, 30, 40, 50 feet away to the grass or the plants. Now, if you put kinks, if you twist it, the hose, does 100% of the potential of that water go out? No. So do you turn the water on higher? Do you scream about the pressure of the water? Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Let's blame the water company. No. You look back and say, oh, there's a couple kinks in the hose. Open those kinks. The water will now flow to its potential. Was the water potentially 100%? Yes. Was it already able to water the lawn or the plants? Yes. What was the problem? The blockages in the hose. You and I. You and I have to wake up. What is our desire? That's consciousness. How much of my desire is actually not only the desire to truly share the light, be that pure conduit, but followed by the actions? Oof. Tough, huh? You know the old, the old joke? Your friend comes to you and says, yeah, I can't wait to win the lottery. You hear? It's millions and millions. I just want to win the lottery. You know what I'm going to do with the money and this and this? And what do you ask? Did you ever buy a ticket? They say, no. So how big is their desire to win the lottery if they've never bought a ticket? Zero. But their mouth says, and you hear them say, oh, I want to win the lottery, want to win the lottery, want to win the lottery. Do they really want to win the lottery? No, because they didn't buy a ticket. We've often said consciousness without action is doubt. So they don't believe they could win, but they wish. Oh, you know, wishful thinking or even positive thinking. I'm going to win the lottery, going to win the lottery, going to... You could positive think for a thousand years. If you don't buy a ticket, is it going to happen? No. So what good is the positive thinking without action? Uh-uh, got to do the action. That's why this Kabbalist called this world the world of action. We had it all in the endless world. The only thing we we're missing is the action of channeling the light. So why do people have chaos and confusion? Because they're not channeling the light. They have blockages. So let's look at it this way. Our desire, remember, our vessel, 100%. There's no such thing as bigger or lesser desire. And this is where, yes, we as the Kabbalah Center teachers, we have been partly responsible for you to understand, oh, there's a bigger or lesser desire. No, that's ultimately in the true biggest picture, that's not true. God gave us 100% desire and that never goes away. So then what do the teachers mean when you hear, oh, this person has a small desire, this one, da, da, da. What does it mean? It means small desire for the light. Doesn't mean small desire. So, Okay, let's use, let's use my Libra-ness. You ever had a friend come and tell you, you know, they can't stand their job, they can't stand their job, they can't stand their job, right? You heard those things? Okay, and they have a desire for another job. But in simple terms, get the example, what do they do every day? They complain about the job and then they go to the same job the next day. And then they come home and they complain again and they go to the same job the next day. So where's the real desire? No, just to have the satisfaction of complaining. They don't really want to change jobs. If they really wanted a different job, what would they be doing? They'd be out looking for another job. They'd be making an effort to find another job. They'd be putting resumes, knocking on doors, begging for jobs. So they tell you, yes, they have a desire to change their job. It's so terrible and this and this. But every day they go back to the same job. So we have to understand, yeah, then the desire is to have the sameness. Oh, so why do they do that? Because the other part is they get satisfaction from complaining. Because all their friends, they go, oh, yeah, I feel sorry for you. Here, let me give you some of my energy, right? Suck my energy here. I'll give you a little energy here. Oh, you poor person. Terrible job. Yes, yes, yes. Woe is you. It's not us. Of course, we never do that. Okay, here we go. Let's see. So, you have a desire for love? Anybody here? Okay. How much? Remember, it's percentages. It's not all or nothing. So we're all looking, yes, we want more love in our life, more love in our life. So what do we do? We plot and plan. Oh, are you on that app? 
where you can find a person, find a relationship, give me a relationship? Are you out there looking, where should I go? Which social event should I go? What app should I be on? How can I go out and get a relationship to get love? No, how much love did the Creator give us? 100%. So we don't need to get love. The thing that's missing, are we a conduit of the light of love? Are we thinking, no, I don't want somebody to give me love. I'm looking for somebody to be a conduit that I can, or a vessel that I can share my love. Because like Karen said, the vessel makes manifest. So if I don't have somebody I can share love with, then in a way, some of my God-given love can't be revealed. And if it can't be revealed, I don't enjoy it. I don't have the benefit of it. I can feel inside, yes, I have all the love there is. But if I look at my physical experiential life, don't have it. Why? Not because it's not there, not because the Creator give, didn't give it to me, and not because nobody else is giving it to me. It's because I'm not sharing it. So we are here to be conduits. Remember a pipeline. I don't want to be a cup, sorry. I don't want to be a cup with a bottom. There's a limitation. Yes or yes? I want to cut the bottom off by sharing more, so I'm a pipe, like the hose. The hose has no limitation how much water it can channel because it's completely open on both ends. So are we trying to get love or we say, no, I want to give love. And okay, but Khaim, I don't, I don't have anybody in my life. You got seven and a half billion people you could love. Just think I'm sending love out of me to every human being on earth. And what about your family and friends? Now we're getting on a touchy subject, right? Okay, for some of us, exactly. So start, just use everybody as a conduit, as a vessel to share your light with. Don't worry if they're good people, bad people, mean people, rotten people. You don't have to hang out with them. But as we said, for our benefit, you want to channel that light. Because if you're channeling the light of love and therefore it's becoming manifest in your life, what will the light manifest as? The right person who shows up that you can share even higher with, more intensely, because there's a closer one-on-one -on -one relationship. Let it sink in for a minute, because we're all not doing it 100% yet. But our, our desire is that we'll do more because of what we're hearing today. What about prosperity? Anyone here like a little more prosperity? Yeah, give me prosperity. So. We're out doing what? I'm going to go get a job that pays me more. I'm going to go show my boss how I'm doing so much work they should give me a promotion. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Hello? That's the opposite of why we came here. God already gave us 100% prosperity. What's missing? The revelation. Finding vessels to share it with. Our job is to be a conduit. Take out the blockage. The blockage of desire to save oneself alone. It's my money. Why should I give it away? I need to get more. They should be giving me more. I'm doing so much work. No, be the conduit. One, tithing. Tithing. The only thing in all of the writings, God says, test me. If you truly tithe, test me that I won't open up the storehouse from above. I'll show you. I'll give you more than you could, than you could hold. That's it. Or... Oh, you can also open your Zohar. Open your Zohar. Look at the scanning chart. Miketz. Start scanning Miketz to remove the blockage, the thought of limitation, the desire to receive oneself alone, and just start being a conduit to every human being on earth that everybody has the prosperity God gave them. No, Chaim, me first. That's why it doesn't work. Me first doesn't work. How many of us have ever heard the saying, what goes around comes around? You ever heard that? Does it say, what comes around goes around? No, I share and then it'll show up. How many farmers hold the orange seed in their hand and say, God, when you put the trees with the fruit, then I'll put the seed in the ground? No, but we don't take lessons from nature, do we? We think, no, 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 the boss has to give me, they have to give me, give me, give me, give me, then I will share. The other way around. How about health? Same idea. Anyone looking for a little more health, vitality, want a stronger immune system, protection from all the stuff that's going on? Oh, so give me the vitamins, give me the doctors, give me, give me, give me, give me all this stuff that will protect me. 
Hello, how much immunity from chaos did God give us? 100%. So why are people getting sick and all of that? Because they're not revealing, manifesting the immunity that God gave them. Not judgment on people. Don't let that opponent put you there. I'm not saying that. We're waking up consciousness so that we can change the planet to one of peace and harmony, heaven on earth. That's what we're here to do. But if we don't see what's stopping it, how are we going to fix it? Why do you hire a repair person? To find the problem so they can fix it. If they can't find the problem, can't fix it, can they? So the problem is our blockages, the kinks in our hose. The Creator made us as pure conduits. What's ego, fear, greed, insecurity, jealousy, sense of lack, limitation? Those are the kinks in our hose. So until we remove them, the light can't flow 100%. We have 100% desire, we have 100% light. It's how we use it that makes the difference. So then our job is to take out the blockages, undo the kinks by all the actions of sharing. Health, you, you should know by now. Open up your Zohar Pinchas. Awakening health, scan, awaken the healing energy inside you, let it flow out to every person on earth, unconditionally. The more it flows through you, guess what? Stronger your health, stronger your vitality, more protection you have. Hope you're getting the idea. We're not missing anything but sharing. That's it. We're, that's the only thing. If we're conduits of the light, everything will happen. <clears throat> so why is there trouble in the world? Now maybe you're getting the idea. Why is there problems in the world? Why do we have difficulty? We're not sharing enough, not no sharing. We all share. If you're watching this, if you're here, I know you're sharing people. I know you're kind-hearted people. I know you're good people. Doesn't mean we can't do more. Even if we're at 80%, there's still 20% more. And until that 20% 20, 20 is revealed by our actions of sharing, it's going to bother us inside. The light that's always pressuring us to be revealed around us and inside is going to make us uncomfortable until we're sharing uncomfortably. A little more tithing, a little more kindness, a little more forgiveness, even of ourselves. But don't take it only of ourselves. Okay? Forgive me, I forgive them. If I can't forgive them, I can't really forgive me because I don't have the energy of forgiveness. Don't think you can forgive yourself and not other people. Mm -mm. If you forgive other people, you have more power to forgive you too. The more you're sharing, the more power you have to be a sharer. Okay? So why is there conflict? Why is there chaos? Because people are using their desire to see for oneself alone instead of desire to share. They're misusing the power that the Creator gave them. So what's the whole purpose? The whole purpose of the center is not to reduce the desire. It's one of the big misconceptions. People go to various places to learn how to overcome their addictions. By what? Reducing their desire. Person addicted to cigarette, reduce your desire. Person addicted to drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, reduce your desire. No. What do we say? God gave us 100% desire. So what's addiction really? Remember the person who told you, yeah, they want a new job, they want a new job, they want a new job, but they're not out finding a new job? So how big is their desire for the new job? Small, it's a little bit, right? So we'd say, oh, they have a small desire. No, it's not small, 100%. But 90% of it is used to be the same, stay the same, be comfortable. 10% is used to complain about their job. So what's an addiction? Addiction is showing us 100% desire. Yeah, for the drugs, the alcohol, the substance, whatever, but it's 100% desire. We don't want to reduce that. The Kabbalah Center teaching people how to take their desire. That's why it's called Kabbalah, to receive. But everything is about sharing. How to expand our desire for the light. Not how to reduce our desire. Expand your desire for the light. So imagine you take a person who's addicted to something, truly addicted, that they, quote, have no control over. Instead of telling them, no, you have to stop it, stop it, stop it. No, just shift it. 
Focus that huge craving, that huge desire for the light of God, the light to be revealed inside you by sharing it out. Because what did they do? When a person has an addiction for something, what's every thought, word, and action based on? How to get it, how to get it, how to get it, how to get it. They go to work, they're still thinking how to get their substance of addiction. They're at the gym, how to get their substance of addiction. They're in family gathering, how to get the substance of addiction. So when we become addicted to the light, when we have a 100% desire for the light because we know it's the only thing that will bring us lasting fulfillment, then naturally, inherently, every word, thought, and action will be sharing the light. How can I share more? Oh, I remember there's that person that I didn't forgive. Let me go forgive them. There's that whatever, that kindness I didn't express. Let me go express the kindness. There's the generosity I didn't express. Let me go express that. Humility I didn't express. Let me go express that. If we crave the light truly 100%, we'll share 24-7. What do you think a Kabbalist is? The true master Kabbalists? If you watch, in our generation, we had the great blessing up until last year to at least see the Rav and Karen. Now we can only hear about them. Or you can listen to people who've been around them. But that's it. 24-7. Literally 24-7. How can we make the world a better place? How can we bring more Zohar to the world? How can we get more people to come and understand what we're teaching? That was it. That's a Kabbalist. The ultimate desire for the light, because that's the driving force then to share the light all the time. Again, desire. If you're at home and you're a little hungry, why do you go to, why do you go to the refrigerator? Why do you go to the cabinet? Why do you go to the phone to make an order? Why do you go to the restaurant? Why do you go to the store? Because desire is motive force. So when our desire is focused on the light, then we're motivated to share. So the whole system of Kabbalah, as we teach it here in the center, is how to increase our desire for the light. Not increase our desire. We already have 100%. It's how to increase our desire for the light. So we're sharing more and therefore revealing more of our potential. Less hidden, more revealed. Then we go to the next level. More revealed, even less hidden. You keep going, going, going that way. So even, let's say, and I would say at least 90% of the people on earth, out of the 7.5 billion people, at least 90% truly just good people. So why do even those people have chaos? So, my favorite example, what's the object of, the objective of driving, driving on the street? The objective is to get to your destination, right? Harmoniously, no trouble, no nothing, yes? What's, what's the objective of drivers in London? Is it different or is it the same? They also have the same objective. They want to travel and get to their destination without an accident, without a near accident, harmoniously, yes? So why can't we drive the way we drive in London or they, when they come here, drive the way they drive here? Because the system's not aligned. The desire is the same, yes? To go from one place to the next, driving without, with harmony, with peace, without an accident. But the system is misaligned. The whole point of the Kabbalah Center is to bring every human being into a soul alignment with the desire to share unconditionally. What's love your neighbor as yourself mean? Right? Every religion on earth claims that's their ultimate goal. Love your neighbors yourself. Love your neighbors yourself. What does it mean? Really? How can I love my neighbor and myself? I have to be able to see. One, I have to have a desire for the light, because that's really what love is. And two, I have to be able to connect to the light in them. That's what it is. As I come to see more light in me, I have to learn to see more light in them. If I want to see more light in me, I have to see more light everywhere. I have to see light in the challenges I have. I have to see light in the difficult situations I'm in. Because how big is the light? Infinite. Infinite. So where can the light hide? It can only hide in the illusion of our five senses. Like I told you with the string. So when a person says, oh, look at the chaos of the world, they're not seeing the light. They're focused on the darkness, the five senses. Did the light run away? No. So you and I have the ways and the means and the understanding how to reveal light. By sharing the light, wake up the soul of every person. That's what it is. How do we do it? You know, one of, the, one of the more powerful verses in the five books of Moses. We probably all heard it, just don't understand it. Love God with all your heart, soul, and might. 
there's a lot of commentary on how can you love something you never seen, you didn't feel, blah, 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 all of that. But what is it really boiling down to? As we are saying today, love is unity. Love is unity. If you really love somebody, there's a greater unity, yes? The more you love somebody, the more unified you are. So love your neighbor means I want to unify with the light in everybody on earth because that's the reality of them. That's the reality. So the more I come to unify myself, have a desire, strengthen my desire to be one with the light of the Creator, heart, soul, and resources. What is might? Love God with all your heart, okay, all your soul, but what's all my might? Heart and soul is like physical might. No, that's why it says, with your money, your talent, your ability. If you do that, then you're connected to the light. And then all you have flowing through you is light. That's why it's the ultimate. Remember the hose? You got three knots in the hose, three kinks. How many do you have to take out for 100% flow of the water? What about two? Two is pretty good. 66%, no? It's better than 33, yes? But it's not 100%. And if we are already filled with 100% light and we have 100% desire for the light, when can we give up? So people say, oh, you know, I was born in this life at 30, I'm now at 80. Whoo, big improvement. I feel a lot more blessing in my life, a lot more peace and harmony and guidance and clarity, yes? Yes, but can I stop there? It's more than I ever had, let's say, in any of my lifetimes. Why can't I stop? Why can't you and I stop? Because God already filled us with 100% desire for 100% revelation of the light. So we will never truly feel bliss, true eternal bliss, until we're revealing 100%. That's why the light is an unstoppable force, because the light's always pushing on us. No, I gave you 100%, I want to see the 100% manifest. We're saying, no, 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 80% is good, because the other 20 means I have to be nicer to that person, I have to give what I don't want to give, I have to be kind and forgiving, and who wants to do that? I just want to be comfortable my 80%. You understand? That's why it won't work. You can try and sit on your laurels, but it's not going to work. The most powerful f motivating force, yes, it's our desire, but what motivates desire when a person doesn't want to be motivated to that next level? And I hope this is not scary to you, but I want us to have objectivity, because all the Kabbalists write the same thing when there's pain and suffering. Think back on your life. I think I've shared before. I had this one relationship before I was in the center. It was nice, comfortable, but I came to the realization it wasn't the right relationship, but it was comfortable. So I didn't want to let go. Why should I? It's comfortable, nobody else meanwhile. Why not? One day I woke up as if God just took its hand and squeezed my guts. I couldn't get out of the fetal position, but I knew it was the universe telling me, you got to let go. Because as I've come to understand in the center, it wasn't only for me. Yeah, okay, comfortable for me, but what about for her? I wasn't being loving or kind to her by just holding on, knowing that that was the end, that it was over, right? That we just weren't a match. You follow? So when I finally looked up, and I literally I looked up at the ceiling in my bedroom, I said, okay, God, I, I give up. I will uh, we'll have that conversation. And then it's like, God, let go. So how many of you right now are feeling like being squeezed by life? Yes, all of us to some extent. So we're here to understand why. You don't blame them. That's what the opponent wants us. The opponent wants us to fight everybody else and anything outside of ourselves. But remember, when we left the endless world, there was only one of us. We came in unity. We came on the same team. We only have one opponent, the opponent, that parasite that's also in all of our heads giving us lack, limitation, doubt, fear, ego, etc. That's it. Our job is to be unified against the opponent. His job is to divide and conquer us. No, I have to be better than them. They're better than me, I have to get better. Oh, I have to look at people who are worse than me so I feel good. No, those are all my teammates. If I don't unify with their soul, the light in their soul, I'm not unified with their vessel. How am I going to get to 100%? Can't. Can't. So the whole power of the center and the only mission of the center, 
by offering us the tools, spreading the Zohar around the world, Anabakoach, 72 names, all these things, understanding the cosmic events, the light that's coming in, build a vessel. All we're teaching people is how to open our vessel to let the light flow through us. So we're sort of metaphorically, we're cutting off, if you will, more and more of the bottom. You cut a little bit, you went from 20 to 30. You cut more, 40 to 50. Cut more, you're getting the idea, until you get to the 100%, then it's just flowing 100%. You take out one of those kinks in the hose, 33% more flow. The second one, 66% more flow. The final one, 100% flow. That's it, that's all we're here to do, my friends. So the point of the center is not to make us all the same. You come to the Kabbalah Center, you dedicate to the mission of the center, doesn't mean you have to stop being Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, black, white, yellow, brown, Democrat, Republican, I don't know, North, South America, whatever you want to call yourself. The outside is the outside. The purpose of the center is align the souls with the one mission that every single human being came down to this world to do. How to just be conduits of the light, pure pipelines of the light, take out the obstacles, the blockages that are holding it back, because once we're shining the light, and we're all shining the light, 100% light revealed in the world, no place for the darkness to hide, and then what does the world look like? What we all want. Heaven on earth, eternal bliss, paradise. It's in our hands. Today is the day. Make yourself your own commitment. Don't look around and say, well, if they'll commit, I'll commit. Really? So if they're living on $5 an hour, you're going to live on $5 an hour? I don't think so, right? We want our maximum. So let's start setting the example by showing how we can be more kind, more loving, more generous, more humble, more forgiving, more tolerant, because like will attract like. You want to draw out the righteous person, the holy person from the most evil person in your life or that you can see in the world? Set the example. Shine more light. The light will reach into their soul, start to bring that out. And the light will take away their darkness. The light will show them the kinks in their hose. So they'll take that out. And then they'll just be flowing also with 100% light. Heaven on earth is right around the corner. It is literally here now. We can all feel it when you close your eyes and you just quiet your mind. We can all feel it. It's up to us. We are the generation that can make it happen. And the more we will put to use what we talked about today, the faster it will happen. And may we make it happen now. God bless. Okay. So we'll, take, we'll make a short meditation. First, we'll do our offering. And again, I appreciate okay, your offering. That's it. You get something from what we heard today, just share. Channel it. Help other people have the same thing. Maintain what we're doing here. I mean, in simple terms, we do live in the physical world. If we can't pay the bills of this building, how long can we stay here? So, I, if you think about it, okay, let's not go there. The people who are participating in benefit should be the ones helping not only support, but to expand. Because like we said, the more you expand this, the more reach you get. Your sphere of light gets gr bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not just, okay, it's a nice place, I'll give here. No, remember, desire to receive. I'm here to be the conduit. God gave us resources, let's share it so we can make more light in the world revealed. That's it. So that's why we always take these few moments just to bless, put our love, our appreciation into this. So those of you who are here, please hold it. Yeah, it's there. I put the link online for those of you who are joining us from around the world. Do the meditation and then just go online and thank you again for your support. So let's just awaken that next level, gratitude, appreciation. Increase the amount of awareness of all the blessings you have. Often it's the fact that life looks the same that is the greatest blessing. Because where it should have gotten less, it should have had some obstacle, blockage, challenge, difficulty. The fact that we've shared what we've shared took away that. Now let's push ourselves to the next level. How can we share more in all ways? Starting with gratitude for all the blessings in our life. Gratitude that we've come to learn how to see, understand. There's infinite light. The Creator created us pure and perfect light beings. 
And by sharing this gift, letting more of the light flow through us so we can expand our words, thoughts, and most importantly, actions of love, kindness, and compassion that strengthen our consciousness, our awareness of the light inside every human being, that we're all on the same team, we are all one soul. What happens to them happens to us. The more we shine our light, the more they will also. So we send this gift through the projects of the center, bringing people to this wisdom that they will understand the power of the Zohar and will spread so much Zohar in the world, the end of all pain, suffering, and death. And together we say, Amen. So, those of you who like to stay with us online, here's our name of the day. For those of you here, <clears throat> it's Mem Yud Chaf, if you're unfamiliar. The Hebrew Aramaic letters are literally portals of light. They shine light from the endless world. This combination, Mem Yud Chaf, is to bring what's hidden inside to re be revealed on the outside, revealing the concealed. So just look at it. It's not, about, it's not even a word. If you do happen to read Hebrew, you can tell everybody else it's not a word. It's a spiritual chemical formula to help awaken more of the light that's been hidden inside of us to be revealed through greater actions of sharing. Mem Yud Chaf. So just take a moment, close your eyes. Okay, at least we just started. Close your eyes, take a few deep breaths. Just feel the light in your soul. Acknowledge the Creator gave us a hundred percent desire for the light. Let the light inside you, with our added desire, show us where we're blocked. Show us clearly in our own eyes where we have held ourselves back through a sense of limitation, ego, fear, judgment, sadness, guilt, hurt. Let's see the beam of light from the endless world, from our pure and perfect selves, shining down on us, just above our head, the energy forces, Mem Yud Chaf, that as the light passes through them, the light manifests in the power to reveal the concealed. Let that energy flow through the top of your head filling you from head to toe and centering itself in your soul that the Mem Yud Chaf is awakening stronger desire for the light stronger consciousness that the light is our only source of lasting fulfillment and as we do the actions of sharing our light in yet higher and higher ways, we have greater certainty and trust that the light will return to us. Maybe not in the ways we expect or would like, but it will return to us the right way, through the right pipelines, at the right time, for our highest good. Let that Mem Yud Chaf expand that energy, that vibration inside you. And then let it pass through you, sending it out to every human being on earth. Envisioning Mem Yud Chaf being engraved in their heart and their soul. Activating proactively and preemptively their greater sense 
They are filled with light. The Creator wants them and has given them 100% blessing. That as we awaken that awareness, that light in them, they come to that consciousness. What goes out of them will come back to them. To raise the vibration of every human being on earth to a higher level. Love your neighbors yourself, human dignity, kindness towards every person. And one more deep breath to anchor it inside of us indelibly and slowly exhale and open your eyes. Thank you all for joining us around the world. Thank you all for being here with us. Look forward to seeing you next week. We will be here next week. Tell your friends, share the video, watch it again, let it go out there, just put it out there, right? The right people will find it at the right time in the right way. Lots of light, love, and blessings. Have an amazing week. Thank you all for being here with us. Thank you for joining us. If you liked what you saw, click the subscribe button so you'll be notified of future videos as we post them. would also love to hear your comments and questions, whether it's about this video in particular or about the wisdom of Kabbalah as we teach it in the Kabbalah Center. If you'd like to learn more about various subjects, go to our website, www.kabbalah.com. We have thousands of articles and classes on various subjects within the wisdom of Kabbalah. Share this video with other people. If you are inspired and it can change your life, let's start changing thousands and thousands of people's lives around the world also. If you'd like to contribute in support of Spiritual Sunday and the projects of the Kabbalah Center, that link is also below. I wish you an amazing day, afternoon, evening, wherever you may be out there. And may God bless us all that we awaken the light of the Creator, not only inside us to a higher level, but touching the heart and soul of every human being on earth with the light of the Creator.